TGIF, motherfuckers. Now, what's going on? It's Friday, and like usual, here at Tech of Tomorrow, we've got something cool for you guys. That way, you know, if you're not out going to a party or getting crazy, you can be putting the information into your head. So, you guys know, launch date of the new Haswell E and the X99 platform, all coming out today. Now, unfortunately for us, Intel this time, in order to avoid NDA, held everything very, very tight to their chest. And so, well, to have all these systems built in there we're bringing to you guys, we're kind of slight beyond the curve, and we'll have a full system and everything for you guys just a day later, which will be tomorrow, or manana for my Latin fans. Now, with that said though, today we're gonna talk about what exactly it is, what it's all about, and what it's gonna be bringing to the table for you. And then you can sleep and dream about it, and then tomorrow when you wake up, you can come and go, oh wow, hey, that's what a system did. So instead of just actually just putting a board in the test system, this time we built two full-blown systems, stuck Windows 8.1 in them both, ran the test comparisons, and we're gonna bring all those numbers to you. Now before we go into the video though, why don't I just send a special thanks out to the people over at audible.com. And if you guys wanna get your own personal audiobook for free, just go over to audible.com forward slash tomorrow and check that stuff out. With that said, let's jump in and let's see what Intel's brought to the table with Haswell E and X99. So the first thing to talk about is this is Intel's very first eight core processor that's not a Xeon. I know AMD fans are gonna be going, oh yeah, AMD's had it. But for Intel, this is their first non-Xeon eight core processor, which means that you can have 16 threads running all at the same time. And that's where actually this processor comes into play because in the hyper threading and all that kind of stuff is where this thing really flexes its muscle. Gaming with this, yeah, if you're gonna do a bunch of video cards, X99 is gonna be your band baby, but if you're somebody who's crunching numbers, doing all kinds of intense application type things, that's where X99 is really gonna come into play. The workstation slash gaming arena. A key feature for enthusiasts out there is these things come made to overclock. That's right, these things are geared to overclock. It says right on their description, overclocking enabled. So you people out there who want to get all intense and do overclocking, this is gonna be a CPU you're gonna to wanna to be looking at. On top of that, X9i is also the first desktop platform to bring DDR4 to the table. We have some Corsair 2133 megahertz stuff that we've got in ours and it's some seriously vengeful memory. Now, for you PCI Express enthusiasts out there, X99 offers 40 lanes of PCIe 3.0 availability. Now, this thing's pretty incredible because you can use four discrete graphics cards in this and get no bottleneck whatsoever in your CPU, which is what everybody's trying to avoid. So if you're looking to do that quad SLI or quad crossfire configuration, X99 is what you're gonna be looking at if you like that kind of stuff. Let's now take a break from our regular scheduled programming and take a trip back in time to the earlier days of Intel. We've now arrived in 2003, where Intel had a single core CPU with 1.7 million transistors and was based off the 130 nanometer process. As we jump forward in time to 2005, we see the first dual core CPU based off the 90 nanometer process. A year later in 2006, the first quad core CPU based off the 60 nanometer process. We jump ahead four years in time, whoa, to the first six core CPU based off the 32 nanometer process. Whoop. All right, now that we've arrived back in 2014 with Intel's latest Haswell E, which is the eight core processor version, we see 2.6 billion transistors on the 22 nanometer process. So you can see things have come a long way, baby. Now, just to clarify for you nitpickers out there, this history lesson was based off of Intel's extreme processors. Real quickly, let's touch upon the CPU that we're using in our test setup. This is Intel's latest Core i7-5960X, or Extreme Edition processor. This is the top of the line of the three that they're releasing on this launch. Now taking a closer look at that die, we see the die size is 17 millimeters by 20.2 millimeters. It's 2.6 billion 22 nanometer Trigate 3D transistors and 20 megabytes of Intel Smart Cache. For you folks out there who are kind of new, what is Intel's smart cache? Essentially, it's 20 megabytes spread across all the cores for faster access. Now with this launch, there are three new SKUs and let's check those out. First up, we have the entry-level Intel Core i7-5820K. 
This features six cores and 12 threads. It has a 3.3 GHz base clock and 3.6 GHz turbo boost. It features 15 megabytes of cache, 28 PCIe lanes, and retails at about $389 US. Next up is the mid-level Intel Core i7-5930K. This one also has six cores and 12 threads. The clock speed, however, on this is boosted up. It's at 3.5 GHz for the base and 3.7 GHz for the turbo boost. This also features 15 megabytes of cache and 40 PCIe lanes and retails at about $583 US. Now, last but not least, the top of the line Intel Core i7-5960 Extreme with eight cores, 16 threads. Base clock, however, is a lot lower. The base clock is 3.0 gigahertz with a boost of 3.5 gigahertz. I know some people out there are gonna go, what, oh my God, it's gonna be slower, but no, it's not because those extra cores are gonna pick up all that stuff and make it even faster when it's processing information. The next feature is something that also separates the 5960X from its two brethren. And that is this one comes with 20 megabytes of cash and retails for about $999. Also, real quick, because I know people are going to ask this. Yes, all three CPU SKUs use DDR4 memory. They also all have a TDP of 140 watts and all use Intel's latest 2011 V3 socket. All right, folks, so as we slowly wind this video down, let's take a real quick look at what the differences are between X79 and X99. The X99 offers eight and six core CPU support versus the six and four on the X79. The X79 features up to 20 megabytes of cache versus the 15 megabytes on X79. The X99 features four channel DDR2133 memory versus four channel DDR3-1866 memory on the X79. Now the X99 TDP is also slightly higher at 140 watts versus 130 watts on the X79. There's also a maximum of 10 SATA 6 gigabits a second on the X99 versus 6 on the X79. Thunderbolt 2 support is also available on the X99, while the X79 offered no Thunderbolt support, period. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Thunderbolt 2, it offers 20 gigabytes per second of bi-directional bandwidth, which is four times faster than USB 3.0 and 20 times faster than Firewire. You can daisy chain up to six devices via a single port, which includes 4K displays through DisplayPort 1.2. Now, last but not least, though, before I bounce out of here, I want to give another special shout out to the people over at audible.com. Now, I know a lot of folks out there have been giving me a lot of positive reinforcement by comments below saying, hey, dude, we noticed you've been losing weight and all that stuff. Well, I have to actually give thanks, though, to an author named David Perlmutter. Now, his audio book just totally opened my eyes to how eating a bunch of different food can affect not only your diet, but how you actually think. This book is called Grain Brain, and it talks about all of these new grains and excess of sugar and how they affect your life. Basically bringing you down, making you feel slower and sluggish, and by just basically cutting these foods out of your diet, it can literally change your lifestyle. You would be just amazed on how cutting these foods out of my diet has improved my lifestyle quite a bit. So if this is something that sounds good to you and you're a person out there, you're going, hey man, I like what you're doing, Elric. I'd like to change my life as well. Or hey, if you're ready for the change, check it out. And you can do this very easily by just going over to audible.com forward slash tomorrow. Help out you, help out me, help us all out and improve your lifestyle all in the same bucket. So all right, folks, that wraps up today's video. And that's basically all the nitty gritty stuff that you really need to know as a layman about X99 and the new 5960 Extreme processor from the people over at Intel. Like I said earlier, our systems are almost complete. Be on the lookout for those videos very, very soon. Like usual, all of this information will be down below that like button and hopefully my fans know what that is down there below. All I gotta do is click me, show more, and all that information will be down there. I still get emails going, hey, I don't know what to do. So. For you guys, that's where it's at. Go down there, look, hit the show more button, I'll be down there. Pricing, availability. So any of you folks out there looking to jump in a new platform, we'll have some stuff listed down there, including a couple motherboards and all of the CPUs. Also, we have a lot of stuff going on, giveaways and all kinds of stuff for our subscribers. So if you're not subscribed and you like what you see, then hey, you know what to do. Elric, Tech of Tomorrow, peace.